So we welcome you to First Baptist Church of Long Branch Network News. FDCNN for those who are And uh, I am Pastor Julius. And I will be your host this morning. For the next uh, several weeks, we have uh, some special guests that uh, we will be inviting to talk to us. So many of them will be coming to this uh, studio. And particularly, we have uh, Prophet Daniel and his friends. You heard me right. Prophet Daniel. That's right. You know, Daniel and his uh, friends, they've gone through things that are recorded in the book of Daniel. And so we want to hear from them. Let's not waste time. Please sit down, relax, get ready, and uh, we will welcome Prophet Daniel. Everybody, will you please welcome Prophet Daniel? Thank you, Pastor Julius. It's great to be here. Well, Prophet Daniel, we are glad to have you. As we started this uh, series, I just thought it is good for you to tell us uh, some of your background. How did you get to Babylon? And please tell us, what are some of your experiences when you arrived in Babylon? Well, thank you. Well, I was the son of a nobleman in Jerusalem during the reign of Jehoiakim. Jehoiakim was not a good king. I think he was kind of a bimbo. And the prophet Jeremiah was active in that time. And the prophet Jeremiah told Jehoiakim to submit to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, because he had conquered the whole land. Ooh. But Jehoiakim rebelled. And so Nebuchadnezzar came and he deported several of the nobler families back to Babylon. And I was one of those who was taken along. I really wish he had listened to Jeremiah, because Jeremiah was certainly a true prophet of God. But Jehoiakim, he was just rebellious and he wouldn't listen to Daniel's, I'm sorry, to Jeremiah's warning. So I was taken away to battle. I can't imagine how traumatic that must have been for you. It was very traumatic. I was a very young boy. I had just been bar mitzvah and here I am taken away. I was separated from my family. I understand you all have a policy like that, separating mm -hmm. families. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Babylon was judged for that, so you all may want to reconsider that policy. Mm -hmm. But I was separated from my family, and I later found out that several of my acquaintances actually died on that journey because it was so exhausting and so grueling. Mm -hmm. But thank God I had my friends who were there with me, and. We were taken into the palace of Nebuchadnezzar mm -hmm. and put into his training program to be his advisors. And I'm not sure I wanted to advise Nebuchadnezzar, a pagan king. If I wanted to give him advice, I'd tell him, send us back to Jerusalem. Stop being such a cruel tyrant and go jump in the lake. <laughs> but I also understood that we were there by God's will. And even though the training was difficult, we had to learn all kinds of languages and math and astrology and divination and the, the current social customs. But through that, I understood that God had a purpose for us. And we were there to serve God as we were to serve the king. Could you please uh, tell the audience how you survived that time? Well, there were two things that especially kept me going, as well as my friends. The first is prayer. Mm. Prayer is very important. Mm. And you know, for, for us in that time, I know you don't have this idea, but we had the idea that God was limited to our nation. And God was limited to the temple. Mm. And so being almost a thousand miles away from the temple, you know, we were wondering, is God going to be with us in a foreign land? Mm. Is he going to be able to hear my prayers, even if I'm not in his real temple? Mm. But as I kept praying, 
God kept answering. And I learned that God is with us wherever we go. Amen. So prayer was very important. And then, you know, through that prayer time, again, I understood that God had a purpose mm -hmm. for me. That even mm -hmm. though I was in a place that was hostile and pagan, God could use me. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing that kept me going, and, and it worked together, were, were my friends. Mm -hmm. Payne and I, Michelle, and Axariah. They were great friends. And, and we, we bonded together. We were in the same circumstance. We had the same classes, so we could study together. We could encourage each other. Uh, and so that was the second thing that really helped us to get through. Oh, that's incredible. You mentioned the training school in Bangladesh. Yes. Uh -huh. Can you tell us how did that go? Well, I have to tell you, that, that was not easy. I, I told you how difficult the course of studies was. And you also have to realize that we were foreigners that were brought in, mm. and there were several Babylonian boys there, mm. and so they did not treat us with any kindness. We were victims of prejudice and mm. racism. Mm. My friends and I were beaten up a couple of times. Mm. And, you know, prejudice and racism is so unnecessary. It wasn't our choice to be there. Mm. We would have gladly gone back to where we came from. Mm. But the king wouldn't let us. Mm. And so we had to survive that kind of thing as well. Mm. And then, you know, our lifestyle in Jerusalem, I was part of the nobility, so I was used to the good things in life. And But the good things in life in Babylon are far different from the good things in life in Jerusalem. Exactly. And especially the food. You know, I know it says in, in the Bible there that we ate from the king's table. Mm. And that sounds, well, that's hardly a hardship, huh? Mm, wow, you know? <laughs> Wish I could eat like that every day. Uh -huh. Well, you have to understand the at first, mm. the food was very rich. Mm. And I found it hard to concentrate. If you can imagine in your time Thanksgiving dinner every night, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And how you feel after Thanksgiving dinner? Mm -hmm. That's how we felt after eating all this king's rich food. Not to mention the wine. Mm -hmm. The wine was really strong. I don't know how those Babylonian boys maintained their concentration in order to study. Because mm -hmm. I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. I had to kind of refuse the wine. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and, and again, they, they had things that we could not eat, like pork and shellfish and other things mm -hmm. that they thought were good. But mm -hmm. by, by Jewish standards, we could not eat that. And then the few things that might have otherwise been clean, we found out that they offered it to their idols oh, first. Oh. And so by eating that, it was considered participating in idol worship. Mm -hmm. and that's the first commandment of God and the mm -hmm. second commandment of God. We follow Him only and we no. don't worship idols in any way. So that's right. when we got down to it, all that food was there and I could hardly eat any of it because it wasn't acceptable. So what did you do? Well, I was the first one to bring it up with the other guys, and I said, you know, here we are in a foreign land, mm -hmm. we can't worship at the temple, mm -hmm. we can't make sacrifices, but we can do what we can do, mm -hmm. and besides the fact that this food is ruining us, mm -hmm. we got to follow God's rules, even if it's only the dietary laws, mm -hmm. and, you know, we understood that uh, you have to be faithful in little things, mm -hmm. as well as faithful in the big things, so I told them, I can't eat this anymore, and I asked them to join with me as uh, we worked together and present a united front. And we went to the chief official and said, here's what we need to do. This is, we can't eat this food. And of course, the chief official was sympathetic. He would kind of had a good relationship. Mm -hmm. But he was also concerned. You know, mm -hmm. He had a job to do. He had to make sure that we were ready to present to the king and that we were kept healthy. Mm -hmm. And so he was concerned. So we, we kind of compromised and worked out a test where we would eat vegetables and water for 10 days. Ooh. And he would have a look at us. And if we didn't look healthy, we'd find something to eat. Ooh. But if we did look healthy, we could stick with that diet. Mm -hmm. And, you know, thank, the, thank God in heaven that uh, the official was given to our plea. And he allowed us that, that, that test. And I know, again, you, you all don't have these limits because Jesus declared all foods clean. Mm. But I didn't know that back then. Mm. I had to adhere to the Jewish dietary laws. And, mm. and even though it seems like a minor thing, 
for me at that time, it was a major thing. It was one way that I could show that I belonged to the great God of heaven and that I did not belong to these other pagan gods. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus said something about being faithful in little. That's right. And then he knows he can trust you to be faithful That's in much. Right. Mm -hmm. well, this was our way to be faithful in the little. Mm -hmm. And God blessed us for it. I'm glad that this walked out with that official. But was there any final examination before the game? There's always a final examination, uh, Professor Julius. <laughs> yes, there was a final examination. We were brought into the very presence of Nebuchadnezzar. That was intimidating. Mm -hmm. Plus all of his senior officials. That was intimidating. And they, especially because we were farmers, mm -hmm. they asked us, I think, every question in the exam book. Mm -hmm. But you know, God blessed me and God blessed my friends, he gave us that special knowledge and the gift, and we were able to answer every question. Not only did we pass the test, but we came out at the top of the class. Mm -hmm. And we were appointed senior officials to Nebuchadnezzar. You can imagine how the Babylonian boys felt about that. Mm -hmm. You know, here are these foreigners taking their jobs, but we were the ones most qualified to do it That's because good. God gave us that blessing. And so again, we. We understood that if, if God had gifted us like that, He had a purpose for our lives in that place, even if that place wasn't Jerusalem. We have to trust that He puts us where we are for a good reason. I know it's always uh, very difficult to adjust when you go from one place to the other, yes. particularly a place that is not familiar to you. I remember moving from Canada, uh, from Nigeria to Canada, there was a process of adjustment. Yes, sure. How did you adjust to the life in Babylon? Well, you know, again, for, for the Jewish community, it took some time. Mm. Uh, things were very different, the, the culture was very different, there were idols all over the place. Mm. Uh, we stuck to our community so that we could support each other. Mm. But I think the, the biggest blessing was when we got Jeremiah's letter and he encouraged us to settle down and to marry and have children and to raise our children there to seek the prosperity of the city because we were going to be there a long time. And in that letter, Daniel says, I know the plans I have for you, plans exactly. for good and not exactly. for harm. Yeah. And so I think the biggest lesson I took from that, Pastor Julius, yeah. is that wherever you are, if you are in God's good plan, you can bloom where you are planted. Mm -hmm. We may not be where we want to be, mm -hmm. but if we are where God wants us to be, then we can flourish. And that's what happened. I mean, my friends and I flourished in government. The Jewish community grew large in that time. Mm -hmm. And so God is faithful to all of his promises. You are right, uh, Prophet Daniel. I strongly believe that it is important to be in God's plan irrespective of where we are geographically. And uh, we, will let, we should let the audience know that it is always good to be in God's plan. Amen. Thank you, Prophet Daniel. God's plan is always good for us. Amen. And just so you know, in my book you'll find out more about God's plan. You can read it for free. <laughs> But it's been good to be here today, Pastor Julius. And I pray that God will bless this church as they faithfully follow you and follow Jesus. Thank you very much, Amen. Thank you very much. Please, uh, let me give a round of applause to Brother Daniel.